From the Ugly Paired Studios in Newcastle, California, the Loom Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. I'm back. Scott Robinson with you for another episode of Beyond the Humidor. Did you feel my absence last episode? Nope. Not in the slightest. <laughs> wow. Missed you like an impacted wisdom tooth. <laughs> You guys, I'm going home. <laughs> Dude, don't bullshit us with a good time. Come on. Tell everybody why you weren't here. We did not do that. Did you you had no comments last week of why I was gone? Uh, absolutely not one. You listened to the show. Yeah, I did. I was surprised. Were we you were saving we, it all. We were for waiting. Now? We were waiting. We wanted to lambast you in person when you could defend yourself. All right. <laughs> so I don't know if I've mentioned it on any of the shows, but I think most people know I have a mini Aussie. Her name is Harley. Tiny wife over the last mm, couple of months has been... four days after you got Harley. Don't, don't <laughs> bullshit these people. <laughs> he is, she needs a friend. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty much what she's been saying. Harley needs a friend, someone to play with. I think she's lonely. I've said she's a bloody dog. She's perfectly fine. So because the level of difficulty in my life isn't high enough, I decided to give in and say, yeah, let's go look for a friend. And in turn, we have another mini Aussie. Eight month old Hondo. Hondo. Yep. Hondo. Good. So, so can I just point out that I'm curious, Sue, why Harley needs a friend because y'all work from home. Anyway. Well, she she has another dog to play with, so <laughs> I don't know. But it works. He's the total opposite of Harley. Mellow as hell. Just kind of just, you know, walks around, chills out, shits all over my house, pisses all over my house. Well, sounds fabulous. Yeah, doesn't it, though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in the... Th- throws of potty training wait, wait, why are you looking at me i don't shit and piss all over your house why did you just <laughs> shoot me the side eye wait a minute hold on wow what's going on here i don't know somebody's got a guilty conscience <laughs> i don't i don't know uh i don't know but there was a mop and a mop bucket out of a place the other night i'm just saying something oh, happened i know I had to clean up the old gorilla enclosure Speaking of which, how's it going, Gorilla? Uh, gorilla is good. A little tired, but good. Mm-hmm. As as stated in previous episodes, the next month and a half is going to be very busy. But gorilla, I just have to say, you work too hard. No, oh, I do not. Whoa, no, back God, the God. fuck up. What the fuck have you just gotten me into? God damn it, I Greg. work too hard. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> fuck. Has Greg made himself your union representative? No. You, for the past three episodes, you've been jockeying for money. Now you're telling them he's working too hard. What the hell, man? What? I'm just inquiring. Keep it up, man. It's going to be like John L. Lewis and the coal miners. We're going to (laughs) beat a fucking union representative. Uh Uh-oh. I say, Greg, I'm making more than double what I made this time last year. Do not fuck this up for me. (laughs) Pinkerton agency is going to be called. We know how well that went. Oh, geez. So what's going on, Greg? Haven't seen you in a minute through your yeah. many traveling adventures. True. I am uh, back from Idaho again uh, last week and uh, had a good time up there. Saw the boys in uh, the vault and got my fabulous prize from Josh. I will. Uh, I should have brought that for this show, but I forgot. Um, Josh did a thing on New Year's Day where they did inventory of the vault. Okay. Of his humidor. And it was uh, prizes right rules. Guess who? Guess uh, closest. Well, I guessed twenty five thousand cigars, and turns out it came back at uh, a little over twenty six. So uh, I won a fabulous prize. It's a five pack of cigars. It's pretty old from his secret stash. So we'll talk about those on the next program. Fabulous. We ain't smoking them, but we'll talk about them. <laughs> well, that's fabulous, Greg. Mm-hmm. Lawrence, how are you, sir? Wow. Spent all day wrapping a kitchen trailer over the existing wrap, which I swore I would never do. But my buddy Javier, 
who makes the best tacos, street tacos in the world, by the way. Uh, if you're in uh, the Sacramento area, it's uh, Mi Ranchita Tacos Express, and he sets up in Lincoln. He'll be at all the Potters games. He does a lot of the Lincoln uh, high school events, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, good dude, man. Used to have a restaurant in Loomis where Green Elephant is now. Uh, uh, he had a taqueria there years ago. And I've known the guy for like 25 years. So it was an all-day adventure. We started on it at uh, 9.30 this morning. And we got done about 4.30 this afternoon. So I'm I'm whipped. I'm too old for that kind of work. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? <clears throat> and And how are you, Mr. Robinson, from your episode hiatus there? I'm here between work, dog, (laughs) and everything else. It's like, I need a freaking nap, man. (laughs) But I have a drink and a cigar, so I'm just as good. Can't be all that bad, right? No, 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 no. So what we got going on this week? Well, as everybody knows that is in, uh, even remotely part of the cigar world knows that it is the Premium Cigar Association's Uh, International Trade Show this weekend. Today is the last day as of the date of this recording. The 25th at 5 o'clock our time. So it's already closed and they're they're wrapping it up there. Um, There's a lot to talk about. Obviously, we did not go. A little bit of financial of a nightmare regarding that. But there's a lot to compile. I've got a lot of information sent by a lot of the vendors. So that's a show that it will be upcoming for you guys. Uh, But a little bit of things I did want to see this year, they did some awards um, this year, and I don't remember seeing these the last couple of years. So one of them is called the step up award. Uh, The step up award is awarded by the PCA government affairs team. Um, Josh Aberski is included in that. Uh, It recognizes retailers for their extraordinary advocacy efforts. So uh, two of our friends this year, Won the won one of the awards. Um, Josh Everett's at the Vault, 1905 in Meridian, Idaho, and Paul Banducci of the Racketeer Lounge up in uh, what is he? Anyway, Northern Coeur Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, isn't he? No, no, something else. It's just outside of Coeur d'Alene, but yeah, up there, they both won the awards. Um, you know, they were very instrumental last year in getting the 50 cent tax cap passed through. Um, in the state of Idaho, so you cannot tax a cigar more than 50 cents. Uh, one of the other things they did this year is their Best of the Leaf Awards. And uh, there were three categories, shops only, cigar lounge, and cigar bars. And um, one of the industry, uh, one of the uh, lounges is one that is in reasonable driving distance for us. And I believe you've been there, Scott. I'm not 100% sure, but it's Cigars Mosfino in Fresno, California. So they were voted on by... Um, is that Fresno or Bakersfield? This one says Fresno, California. Okay. So that one is uh, shops can nominate themselves, and then they put it out to other retailers and consumers, and they had uh, over 10,000 votes this year. So congratulations to uh, um, Cigars Mosfino in Fresno, another one that I have not been to, but our good buddy Bob... Fox Cigars Bar in Scottsdale, Arizona. They made the list, too. So, you know, it was uh, pretty cool. But like I said, there's a lot to come from PCA. My email box has exploded over the last few days uh, with various things, uh, various new lines. So um, I'm not sure how we're going to put that show together, but we'll get that show put together and talk about what's new to come out. Are we allowed to uh, plug other podcasts if people want to look at their live videos since we didn't go? Yeah, what the hell? So if you guys are interested in seeing what's been going on in PCA, uh, a couple podcasts, um, a lot of podcasts went, to be honest with you, but the videos that have been coming out of Blind Man's Puff have been amazing. They've done a lot of interviews with all our favorite industry standards, so please, if you're not liked, shared, and subscribed to them on Facebook... um, we are liked, shared, and subscribed. You can see their links on our Facebook page or go check them out. Uh, the other thing is Ma- uh, Matt and Justin with How About That Cigar. They have not done any lives this year, but they did do all their videos. They'll be coming out in the next few weeks. So, you know, you can also check out How About That Cigar's Facebook page um, and their podcast on PCA as well. And then, you know, ours will be out in the coming weeks. So... If there is no 
if 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 all the PCA news just came out today, is there no cigar news then? Or is uh, there so much cigar news? So so my inbox went from about 50 emails to 400 in the last week. Oh no. I mean, I've got I I've got three or four emails from West Tampa cigars. Uh there's a a a PR company that handles about six or seven different houses. I've got an ungodly amount. I mean, it, it's literally, I sat down the other day to try and start sifting through this. And when I do not have the focus or attention for this right now, it was bad. And it's, it's, well, that's, a, that's a tough problem to have is cigar folks. Yeah. Right. But uh, that's going to be a lot of when the weather gets a little bit better, because we've had a couple of beautiful days, we're supposed to have one more and then the rain's coming back. So it's going to have to be a sit in the backyard, light up a couple of cigars and, and sift through email and make cigar news and, and get pictures ready for, for you and I to do the video for that. It's, it's, it's not going to be fun. We're going to have to have a cigar news telethon, I think. Uh, yes, pretty much. I'm figuring it's an hour show by itself. Just talking Easy. about all the different lines that have come out, you know? Well, that's good. Maybe two. I don't know. You know what cigar news means? New cigars. That's yes. always fun. Yes, there are a lot of new ones coming out. I am particularly excited about one. Okay. And I think we talked about the cabinet on last show. Yeah, I think so. But uh, but if you guys do, if those of you that are seasoned smokers and have been with us a while, Hoya de Nicaragua released the Cabinet. It's a Corojo wrapper on the top, Connecticut on the bottom third. It used to be in several sizes, including a Lancero. They stopped production on the Lancero. They announced at this PCA, and the boxes are gorgeous. Um, they are are bringing out a thousand boxes to the world of the Lancero. So I've already set my counterparts uh, at various cigar lounges on that project. You have a you have a bounty out. I do, I do. I uh, I talked to several shops in a three state radius, and they were like, "Sorry, can't help you." Um, so I called Samuel with just the tip and said, "Hey, dude, strong arm your broker. I need at least two boxes and see what you can do." Most excellent. Okay. Uh, not to drag up things we talked about in the previous episode, but while I was editing, I finally got to look at the picture of the. And forgive me, I'm not going to remember what house it is or what they're called. The the four, the set of four that are based off wine regions. Oh, that's um, El Septimo. I would like one of each. That those after pulling the photo and re-listening to it as I was editing, those look really good. Yeah, as good. soon as they come out, uh, I know Josh at the vault's likely to get those. So if they're out the next time I go over the mountain, I'll. Uh, Get them for Have you. I ever mentioned how much I love Josh and think he's a quality human being? <laughs> just no, just off the top, you know, nothing related to what we're talking about. Just Josh is a cool dude. Yeah, but yeah, I'd love to try those cigars. <laughs> As Gorilla palms a five under the table, <laughs> go take more than that. Josh is not that cheap. Hey, yeah, but the Gorilla is. <laughs> no offense. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> that wasn't creepy at all. Damn you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm making creme brulee if you're not watching this. Good God. So the cigar for today. Talk, Jimmy. Uh, hold on a minute. I foolishly did not look it up. Oh, my gosh. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's helpful. Scott, tell us what we're drinking while Fucko here is looking up the cigar. <laughs> we are drinking Diplomatical Rum. Ah, very, very like nice. Like Mother said, Greg holds up an empty glass. <laughs> it's not like, empty. Oh, pardon, pardon me with your eyedroppers full of rum. You Pretty fuck. much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You forgot to bring... Damn it. Next time we're bringing a sippy cup. <laughs> your grandson has yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, he, he don't even use a sippy cup anymore. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be happy to donate you one, Greg. Okay. So, we are smoking uh, for a specific reason. More about that later. Today, we're all smoking the Rocky Patel Edge Sumatra. If you have not tried the Rocky Patel Edge line, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a, I don't want to say budget cigar, but it's one of the ones that's on a lower price point. It averages about $10 a stick here in California. 
Uh, this one is a uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. It has uh, a binder that is Honduran tobacco filler Nicaraguan. Um, you know, it, it's it's hard to go wrong with a Rocky, frankly. Strong and spicy uh, with a little wood and ground pepper are the notes. Um, you know, Sumatra is one of my favorite wrapper leaves, so it's always nice to smoke this stick, and it's uh, reasonably priced. Question for you. Sir. Do you think this is pepper more pepper forward than other Sumatras you've smoked? I don't think, to be honest with you, Sumatra tobacco is pepper forward in general. I don't either. I think it's more of a subtle white pepper versus black pepper. If For those cooking people, you'll understand the differences. But you're um, getting that on your tongue as you're drawing in, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, but it's not heavy. Uh, it, okay, my point is... Uh, for this cigar, I think you're getting more of that than I typically do on other Sumatras that I've smoked. It's true. I have to agree because if you that's, think about the that's not the, a bad thing. I'm not. I'm not trying to put down the cigar. It's just it's a little bit different draw, a little bit different flavor than some other Sumatras. Right. Because if you compare it to the the Sumatra, like the 2012 Sumatra from Oscar, it's so much smoother and the pepper is very very subtle. Um, I'd be curious to know, to look up what the binder and filler is on that one because the the mixture of Honduran and Nicaraguan, the Honduran tobacco is definitely going to add a little bit of pepper into there. But, you know, I mean, these are, when you figure they come in 100-count boxes, it's not a bad deal. Okay, let me ask you guys a question. How do you think it's pairing with the Diplomatico? Um, that's a good idea. That's a good question. Hold on a minute. I want to see, because I have my opinion about it. I want to see what you think. Honestly, the, the Diplomatico is so sweet that I almost think you need a, a lighter cigar for that. Um, You're thinking the same thing I was thinking. I was um, like... A, a Corojo or a... Um, Criollo. Yeah, or a Connecticut. Yeah. Um, I mean, this isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's a decent pairing, but it's contrasted a little bit. Yeah, I'll say this, and this is no slam against the cigar or the rum because it is diplomatical. It's not a good pairing for me. Something Nicaraguan maybe, Connecticut, would probably work for me, but with this pairing, it's it's too much of a contrast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't blend together. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't mix. Well, and there, there's some rums that we drink that would be fine with this. Yeah. Um, Barbon court. Uh, um, yeah. Um, plantation. Plantation would be good. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, even bamboo, I think, uh, just over, over a large cube would be all right with this. And, um, but this is just, this is a sweeter rum. Yeah. Um, cane sugar style rum. Uh, and it it needs a lighter cigar. That's just that's just what it needs. And I I, I got to agree. I just I just sipped it, and the rum to me totally overpowers the flavor of the cigar. It's lost. It's too sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem. So, a question for you: Have you ever had a not so good pairing? Contact us over at, what's our email address? Info, I-N-F-O, at LumisCigarCartel.com. I'm curious to hear. So let us know. <laughs> <laughs> there was also another video that I put out this weekend. Uh, I'd, uh, we'd also like to send us your pictures of your cigar setup. Where do you smoke? What's it look like? Do you have a Oasis like Will Brown does over there in Boise? Do you have a... A chair in the backyard, like I do. Send a set. We'd love to know. I think I just thought of a new segment for the show. Uh oh. Rate my cigar lounge. <laughs> Followed by cigar court. <laughs> Basically cigar court. Oh, I Oh, I love it. Cause because here's the thing, audience. Some of you are gonna send us these beautiful pictures of like nice little rooms you've made or nice little corners in a garage. And I know some of you freaks are going to send us like, here's my folding chair in the corner of my shin. <laughs> and I can't wait to see both. Okay. Hey, I'm going to be honest. Hold on. I'm going to be honest. My first cigar 
lounge was a chair and a concrete slab. No table, no nothing. Yeah. I put all my shit on the freaking concrete and smoked my cigar. Just sat out there. Saddest this, this thing day, ever. This is sounding dangerously close to Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just, whoo. We're, uh, you know. Four chubby guys design a cigar lounge for someone. Here we go. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I think you almost killed Scott with that. <laughs> yeah, you talk about three chubby dudes because I'm going to be at home. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Don't be like that. We're you're counting have, on you. You're going to be- have your lavender smoking jacket on <laughs> and your fez, and you're going to be like. You almost got him. <laughs> yeah. You almost your got Your cigar him. lounge is giving depression, darling. Get some track lighting. Light up this face. <laughs> <laughs> We're counting on you to be Ted Allen. Yeah. Who wow. The fu- who the fuck is Ted Allen? Audience, I need you to send us your cigar uh, smoking areas. Oh, to yeah, because we're going to critique we're gonna the shit out of this. <laughs> Get Will, hey, get Will to send us a. I know there's stuff on on Facebook, Done. Okay, but get Done. him to send us a couple of pictures. You got it, because uh, Will, you listen to this program yeah. religiously. Send us. You'll be the first. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll start set, on you. We'll set the monitor up. I'll slideshow through the pictures for them. Oh, I'm I'm loving this already. <laughs> well, see what we have here is just a clash of color. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is gonna be so fucking. <laughs> Colors <laughs> my department. Oh yeah, yeah, Greg. Greg <laughs> that's right. Greg gets to do all the color variations. <laughs> for those your, of you, that, I love your use of gray. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that don't that don't know why they're laughing, I'm colorblind. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, if Greg can pick out colors, that means you did everything in camouflage. <laughs> Hey, I got those little um, here it comes garanimals on all my clothes. What do you want? <laughs> too easy, <laughs> way too easy. <laughs> so, Greg, uh, you want to give us a lead in as to why we are smoking? Please Garani? do, Greg. No, no, by all, you, it's all yours. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, no, too close to home right now. Eh, fudge me. Well. <clears throat> The not so great reason why we are smoking this particular cigar. Smoked by a cat who ain't here no more. There ain't no other nice way to say it. He was a frequent visitor of our home lounge, Tobacco Republic. And last week we got the news that um, our brother, Brother of the Leaf, Noel Edwards, passed away March 6th at the ripe age of 78. So we're dedicating this show to him. Cat, he was just a fantastic cat. Lived a crazy ass life. <laughs> Used to love that he'd come into the shop, tell us stories about the Alaskan pipeline days in the eighties, hanging with the HAs. He um was part of a couple of gentlemen's clubs in the area. Yeah, quite, he did quite a few gentlemen's clubs yeah. across the country. Did I tell you guys the story? I actually interviewed for a job with Noel. In 1992, when I first moved up here from San Diego. Holy shit. You say. I did not know that. No, I I didn't. I've never heard this one. How long did it take you to make that connection? Uh, About the second or third time he came in the shop. Oh, shit. Because he's a a hard cat to forget. Oh, yeah. So I met with his manager, and this is at, I can't even remember the name of the place. It was down there on on, um, Riverside, across from the bowling alley. Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Fireside Lanes. Across. And I met with a manager, you know, and, and he's like, okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And something went sideways. Um, th- they blew a breaker or something, and the manager had to had to truck over and see what the hell was going on. So he, up walks this great big ostrich-looking guy, Noel. <laughs> and, Who are you? I said, oh, man, I was just here uh, uh, just talking to Mike about the, uh, the bouncer's job. <laughs> Noel looks at me kind of sideways up and down and goes, too fucking small to be a bouncer and walks off. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know what? This is a, this is what I've been doing for the last five years, right? You know, <laughs> bouncing and bartending. But no, it, that was that was my introduction to Noel Edwards. You're too fucking small to be a bouncer. <laughs> wow. So then the, the manager comes back and he goes, "Hey, I saw you, you talked to my boss. What do you have to say?" I told him. And he goes, "That sounds about right." He goes, "We'll call you." Yeah, never called me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'd raise a glass to you, Noel, uh, but 
I'm not sure what you drink, and I, for all I know, it could have been Cavassier and Diet Coke, but, you know. Raise a glass anyway. Here's to you, sir. Cheers. Here's to you, brother. Fabulous human being. Yeah. I remember we used to ride bikes together. We rode Harleys together. Once a week, we'd get together, gather over by um, Blue Oaks and Fairway. It was me, Hanson, freaking Gene, and Noel right over to Folsom Harley. Man. Oh, yeah. That's a herd right there. <laughs> yeah. We need to find pictures of uh, of Hanson and Gene, though, to throw up for reference. Because, I don't know where you're going to get a picture of Hanson. <laughs> Good well, luck. He had that one when he was in uniform, and he was flipping everybody off. Retired highway patrolman. Yeah, well, we were over at Folsom Harley one time. This chick shows up on a freaking jeez. Oh, man. It was like one of those fucking Honda. Forgive the non-PC description. Fucking Honda rice burner. Bright purple. Gal gets off of it. Full leather. Full leather jumpsuit. Purple and black and gray. And it fit. Too good? Wonderfully. And she's a young lady, and Noel started talking to her. I would swear. And Noel's probably, what, 70 at that time? Yeah. Yeah, he's about 70. And I have no doubt if he tried a tiny bit harder, he'd have been out on a date with her. Oh, man, that guy was something else. Oh, yeah, he's so freaking smooth. Yeah, just hearing the stories, man. And listening to Noel's stories was like reading uh, Penthouse Forum from the 70s. It's true, and it's it's like back in the pipeline days was the the intro. Oh yeah, yep. and you know it's funny. And it's it's funny. It's also kind of sad in a way. The amount of times that the owner of Tobacco Republic, who is about five or six years older than Noel, would be sitting in there smoking a cigar at the end of the night, going, you know, when the nuclear nuclear holocaust happens, it's just going to be you and me left over smoking cigars. Yeah. Well, proprietor. Now it's just you. So, yeah. God bless, Noel. We'll miss you, brother. Blowing some good smoke up to you. Amen. Mm. Well, now that I was fucking Captain Brain Down, how the fuck do you follow that? Well, I'll, I'll say from the limited interactions I had with Noel as a young person tagging around with my dad, it was all I could do to not say to my dad when he's like, oh, Noel passed away. It almost left my lips, but I respectfully stopped because I almost just went, the crazy fuck who owns strip clubs? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all thats all my teenage brain process is like, oh, Noel's the crazy old man who owns strip clubs. All right. Well, not an inaccurate description. Yeah, but, You're not wrong. <laughs> no, but, but that's just one aspect. I mean, oh, yeah. the picture that I sent you to post up, um, at one point he owned his own sailboat. He loved sailing. What do you, what, what, what? No, 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 there's nothing particularly wrong, but the way you just kind of glossed over, well, that's just one aspect. But the young man, that's the only aspect he gives a shit about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I think the first time I met Noel and I, I, I finally picked up on what it is he did from context, I had to sit there and be like, yeah, I guess someone does have to own that bit, own it, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, oh, yeah. It is just like a normal, like a business. <laughs> How do taxes work with that? Like, like thirteen-year-old me was like, "Huh." It's your kid, young Sheldon over here. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me that. I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess there is. Someone does have to be in charge of that shit. <laughs> if they uh -huh. don't just pop up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anthony's got that confused look on his face going, hey, but he doesn't look Italian. <laughs> hey, I invested in Rick's Cabaret for a little while, made a little money. <laughs> Who am I to judge? I don't think sitting on the rail is called investing, sir. <laughs> no, motherfucker, I own stock. <laughs> I don't think that's what that means either, but okay. 
That's wrong. <laughs> that ain't right. I'm a, I'm a shitty person. <laughs> I'm okay with it. You'll get used to it. Yeah, I haven't gotten used to it yet, so. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. It, com- it, it comes up. It you know, sneaks up on you. Yeah, mm-hmm. all, all of right. a sudden, one day, you're just like, hey, he's a shitty person. Eh, granted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> so, yeah, that was a rough one when we found out last week. Yeah, yep. that, that caught everybody kind of off guard. You know, it was one of those we're sitting around the lounge and yeah, yeah. and uh, on last Thursday night, and somebody goes, we're talking about people that, you know, <coughs> used to be in there, right, right. used to be regulars, you know, moved out of state, this and that. And, and somebody goes, hey, anybody talk to Noel? And, you know, he'd message me. On Facebook, I don't know, five or six months ago, yeah, I tried to message him back, and I didn't hear anything from him. And then Scott got on his phone, and he's like, oh, man. Actually, I used another word, but. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, the, the older we get, the uh, the more uh, that that reality comes into focus, you know? Yeah. Hey, Greg, you can't fucking nod. Shut up. Yeah, man. what the fuck are you nodding for, I youngster? I got socks older than <laughs> because I Because Wes and I, I was smoking with my buddy Wes yesterday at his house, and we were having that exact conversation. He's like, I can't handle this. I'm like, dude. Now, granted, yes, I'm a decade younger than both of you, but Time as out. we get older, it happens faster. Time out. Okay. You're allowed to smoke at Wes's house? Yes. Yes, I am. No, you not no no, I didn't mean you personally. I meant smoking in general. Yes. Really? Yes. Inside or outside? Outside. Okay. I was just I had to clarify cuz you know, if you'd have said inside I'd been like, "Rose, what the hell are you doing?" <laughs> Maybe Wes invested in a rabbit air. Nope, nope, nope. He's got two children. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? You can see Wes throw a crowbar in his pocket for a rabbit air. What does he has children have to do with it? My old man smoked cool filter kings. That was a different generation. Yeah, dude, true. dude, when that hap- when that was going on, he was paying a dollar a box for cigarettes, maybe less. Yeah. No, it was about a dollar thirty five. I know because I used to go to the liquor store and buy them for him. Mm-hmm. With a note, right? Yep. <laughs> Please give Scotty seven boxes of cool filter kings. And I want my goddamn change. Blue box or green box? Green box, Green bitch. box, man. <laughs> Blue box? The fuck? And how the fuck would you know anyway? <laughs> we used to sell cools at my uh, uh, place of employment. Would somebody tell you the blue box is on the left, the green box is on the right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, dude, you just, my parents' idea of a family vacation was going 12 states in a Buick with both of them smoking, the old man with Paul Malls, my mom with Newports, and my dad's idea of fresh air was cracking a wind wing about <laughs> far enough that you could stuff a nickel out that fucker. <laughs> and I'm just walking across the back seat of the Buick. You know, that was pre seatbelt days. So, hey, I was in a cab of a Ford truck and it was just smoked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looked like Cheech and Chong were driving the thing on. Huh? No shit. Like, Daddy, these cools is bad. <laughs> Keep inhaling, God damn it! Yeah, you'll filter the air yourself. Yeah, Sit breathe down, shut deeply. Up. <laughs> so, a gorilla was instructed to remind Greg about a sign. Ah, oh, yes, a sign. Oh dear. Okay, here we go. Things you find in the state of Idaho that make you go, "What the actual fuck?" Besides the state of Idaho itself. Yeah. Yes, there is that. <laughs> Fabulous point, Gorilla. So on my way out on Monday last, I was driving, you know, Will lives about five minutes from Boise International, all two runways of it. And we're driving on Victory to go to the airport. And I passed this, you know how in California, those of you that are not familiar, we have the gray sign or the brown sign that say point of historical interest. Mm -hmm. Same color brown. But this sign says Square Dance Hall with an arrow pointing to the right. Well, all right. And I'm like, where in the hillbilly backwoods motherfuck center of downtown boys have I been placed? The, so the fun thing about those brown and white signs, some, some a committee had to decide 
we we get a certain number of these historical point of interest, Vista View, whatever signs. Custard what right are, here. What are we going to use them for? Square Dance Hall. Square Dance Hall. So did you stop? Negative. <laughs> Come you on. had to do that shit in junior yeah, high. I was going to say, didn't you do that in PE? Yes. No faster way to make someone not want to square dance than force them to do it for a week of PE. Yes, I agree entirely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you didn't have that in, in Compton there, friend? No. We didn't. Uh. We did not. We we didn't do that shit. <laughs> but he can crip walk. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we don't have video of that. Yeah, it is a shame, isn't it? Uh huh. No, no idea how to do my taxes or take out a loan, but by God, I can square dance like a motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you, public education. <laughs> you fucks. Uh, damn public school education. So, Anthony, me to it. we haven't had a mash pod cup t- podcast. A mash <laughs> what, the, what the fuck are you talking about? I need more rum. <laughs> no. yeah. That's that really going to help. Um, we have not had a mash podcast episode uh, update uh, in quite a while. What's going on? It exists. Well, I know that. <laughs> that hey, it's been happening every two weeks per usual. So yep, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. Back in well, December, so we- that pretty much tells you Greg ain't, ain't, ain't listening. <laughs> and your podcast is called Best Care Anywhere, a mash podcast available where all fine podcasts are sold. I suggest you all check it out. Do so. We're getting, we're coming up on the back end of season two. Ethan's enjoying the show. We've had more guests guests on recently. Uh, I think since we last talked, we've done two movie episodes. We watched, finally watched at the actual MASH, the, the movie. Original, yeah. yeah. Uh, directed by Robert Altman. That was an experience. Um, and we, as a bonus episode, uh, if you're not MASH inclined, but history inclined, uh, we did a episode for December the 7th where we watched and kind of talked through the history and making of Tora Tora Tora, which is the good the the good Pearl Harbor film. Have you have you actually seen the uh, the live event where they bomb the airfield uh, at one of the air shows? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Really? Yes. They don't use actual munitions, but they have. Uh, it, it's the Hollywood. Fuel, yeah. Yeah, they have fuel air explosions from the ground and. They literally dogfight and bomb the airfield. It's pretty awesome to see. Wow. And you better have the fire department there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're we're going on. There's new and exciting developments, but that's for a later date. And sooner or later, we'll eventually be into season three. So, yay. So, Gorilla, mm. how you liking that Sumatra? It is fantastic. I I like all, again, Rocky Patel. It's <laughs> It, Excuse me. It's a it's it's not a very hard sell to get the gorilla to smoke a Rocky Patel cigar, but all all the various edges are good, the Sumatra included. So yeah, I'm I'm liking it. Aside from the rum pairing, gentlemen, quite nice. No, it's a good cigar. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'll uh, I'll second the gorilla. It's hard to find something in Rocky Patel's line that's not. Uh, you know, you might find some that's not in your wheelhouse, but it's not going to be a bad cigar. You know. It's, it's going to be well constructed. It's going to it's going to be a good cigar. I like some of the Rocky Patel vintage. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. some of the older ones. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, and there's a couple of disco lines that I really wish would come back, but I realize why they're gone. But damn, um, just the you know, it's the nature of the cigars. beast. Yeah, yeah, you know. And a uh, uh, little update from our last episode there, Larry. Um, since our eighty cent cigar show where we talked about the fields of gold from Cigars International. Uh, one of our listeners, Will Arnold, has bought a box and is enjoying them. There you go. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, let's we'll rehash that for a minute. Um, not a bad cigar. I mean, it's, you know, go into it with an expectation, but, you know, also an open mind. It's, yeah. You know, be, be intelligent enough to realize that if it's an 80-cent cigar, you're getting an 80-cent cigar. Right. Um but uh, I've I've smoked a lot worse and paid a lot more money for those. Yeah. So yeah, it, that's one of those things, man. If you're uh, if you're needing something while you're out fishing, you know, mm-hmm. working on the lawnmower, you know, something that if you set it down for an hour and go, oh man, I don't want to relight this, you're not going to be upset that you 
put a 15 or 18 or $20 cigar down. You know, when I first started smoking cigars, oh, $4 cigar jar? Oh, I'm all about it. $1 cigar jar? What do I know? Give yeah. it a go. Yeah. I mean, the worst that could happen is you go, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. Mm-hmm. And you move on to something else. Hello, Railroad. Bitches. Tommy, the song of your peoples. As we wait for the train to pass. Woo woo. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Try to cut that, gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could have if we weren't talking over it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what are you going to do? Yeah, but you know, the, the whole. Just chop the whole thing and throw but in a hippo break. The other break. thing you guys have to realize is it doesn't come through as much as you think it does. The no, it really horn, does The train it. horn, yes. The rest of it doesn't. Most of the cars and stuff, even the really loud ones, nah. they have to be particularly loud to come through. Yeah, I mean, last episode, they were running an impact behind this door, and you don't hear it at all. So it was amazing. But, um, you know, back to the 80-cent cigar for a minute. You know, that's one of the things that that I've always looked at is – Everybody on the on this show knows, and everybody, most people that know me know that my collection is ridiculous. I keep eighty, some of the eighty cent cigars. I've got some two or three dollar cigars. I keep them in my humidor because inevitably you have that moment. And I don't mean to be a bit dickish, but let's be honest: you're going to get somebody who doesn't smoke that says, "Hey, I'd like to join you and try it." I'm sorry, but I'm not going in there for a twenty dollar stick and having them make you know smoke on it for half an inch and put it down no shit so that's where find a budget cigar that you like have a few around because your friends that don't smoke can enjoy with you and they're not breaking your bank well and they don't feel like an asshole either right you know um well they don't even need to know it's 80 cents well but you know you can you can lead it in because i've had people like ah no man cigars are expensive i'm like look this is a uh, this is a very price, you know, friendly price friendly. Stick. There you go. You know, give it a shot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just if you present it right, that way everybody's comfortable. Yeah, right. So there it is. There and there you go. Hey, gorilla. <coughs> yeah. Thinking it's about that time. Is so it? Are yes, you sure. I, I'm 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 reasonably sure. Any final thoughts, Gregory? Gonna miss Noel. Amen. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Other than that, the gorilla will throw out a small apology. Have not gotten around to filming or doing the humidor reseasoning I mentioned like four or five episodes ago. Shame, shame, shame. The gorilla. I'm sorry. You're right. Fuck that. I'm gonna go start gorilla industries. There you go, Scott. There you go. Look at that. See? That's not the reaction I was. We gotta light for. that. We gotta light that fire, man. Come on. Hey, I'm stoking the flame here. Come on. It's just like this little flicker right now. But I want it to become an inferno. Quick, somebody fart and blow it out. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to make sure I have time to do it properly, not like half-assed holding my phone in one hand. So it will come, It will, but it will come when it is done uh, somewhat decently. Gorilla, 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 gorilla. Take me home, Gorilla. <laughs> Take me home, Gorilla Roads. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to check the ventilation in this building. <laughs> hey, well, the diplomatical is empty. The cigar's not quite to the nub, so I'm going to enjoy it, you know, for the duration. But it is about that time. Want to thank everybody here. Thank you for holding down the fort while I was gone. Now that Daddy's home. Oh, God, that deb- it's coming up. Oh. <laughs> On behalf of Gorilla, of, go- of Gorilla Industries, Lawrence, Ugh. Greg, and myself, thank you for listening. Check us out at LumaCigarCartel.com. Like and share us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. As we always say, uh, for like the last 10 episodes, we're not shadow banned anymore. Nope. So by all means, get on that Instagram, baby. Also, reach out to us at info at LumaCigarCartel.com. Let us know what you think. Let us know you're out there. 
I'm Scott Robinson. And on behalf of all of us here at Beyond the Humidor, look forward to chatting with you in the next episode. But until then, stay healthy and safe. And as I say, good smoke, good drink, and good life. And if you're listening to this right now and you're smoking a cigar, blow some good smoke for our brother Noel. Please do. We love you, man. We miss you.